Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we have a video for you for economics that exists in economics. And so we're going to continue from where we left off last time. And so we were at section four market structure and market failure, and we were looking at the specific objective number three illustrate graphs related to the main market structures. We already, already look at the graphs related to the perfectly competitive firm. And so today we are going to look at the graph that is the graphs that represent the monopoly. So we look at the perfect competition or perfectly competitive firm, but today we're going to look at monopoly. All right. So let's just jump into that particular one. The monopoly, a very interesting market structure. So we have the monopoly and of course we want to know what the monopoly is. All right. So what's the monopoly? While a competitive firm is a price taker, a monopoly is while a competitive firm is a price taker, a monopoly a firm is a price maker. A firm is considered a monopoly if it is the sole seller of its product. Its product does not have a close substitute. All right. So the fundamental cause of a monopoly is barriers to entry. That's the main reason why people have a monopoly because it's very difficult for somebody else to get into the market for whatever reasons that we might be looking at later on. Barriers to entry have three sources, ownership of key resources. The government give a single firm the exclusive right to produce some goods and cost of production makes a single producer more efficient than a large number of producers. So what they're saying is that the three main barriers to entry are ownership of a key resource. So for example, if somebody happened to own, let's say a gold mine or they happen to own a patent or, you know, the copyrights for something, whatever, but they own a key resource, then they, that would be a monopoly right there because nobody else owned this resource that the person would have. And of course, the government gives a single firm the exclusive right to produce some goods. So in some countries, especially small countries, gives the government giving the exclusive rights to certain, you know, back in the day, he had for telecommunications, they would give the right to one company back in the day, you know, for utilities, maybe only one company producing utilities, etc., etc. So if the government feel it's in its best, it is in the best interest of the country to give one person, one firm, the right to produce a certain good at a certain cost, then that's another way in which a monopoly is formed. And then you have cost production make a single producer more efficient than a large number of producers. So what they're saying here is that the because of the cost of production is so high and one firm already have their foot in the door, already establish themselves. So any firm that comes after would have it very, very difficult to even get into the market just based on the, it would be very difficult for a new telecoms company to just come into the Caribbean and just start operating because most up this is not a monopoly but i'm just saying you know how how cost of production can influence whether you enter and exit the market because the cost of putting down roads or putting down rails or putting down you know wires or whatever is so high that certain industries can only be manned by one main firm okay so although exclusive ownership of a key resource is a potential source of monopoly in practice monopolies really arise for this reason so that's a little caveat right there Government may restrict entry by giving a single firm the exclusive right to sell a particular good in a certain market. Like, for example, give them the patent and the copyright laws. Those are ways government control, you know, who can do or produce certain things. So examples of how government creates a monopoly to serve the public interest. An industry is a natural monopoly when a single firm can supply goods or services to an entire market at a smaller cost than two or more firms. So all those are home monopolies arise. A natural monopoly arises when there are economies of scale over the over the relevant range of output. And of course, you know, economies of scale is where as you produce more and more or get bigger and bigger, your costs go down. The average cost go down, so that's a good thing. Not every firm can afford that. Something may produce more and more, your costs go up. We have these economies of scale. So here we have the cost. And so economies of scale is depicted right here. You have the cost curve. And as you produce more and more and more and more, the cost, the average cost goes down, goes down, goes down. That's an advantage, a price advantage that many monopolies would have because anybody else trying to enter this firm, then they would have a problem because it would be very expensive for them to produce at that level to compete with their costs, you know, at that level. Because by the time they're ready to go in, the monopoly, monopoly might have been here where the cost is almost rock bottom, but you might enter here and that's going to be a problem for you as it relates to competition. 
Okay, so let's look at Monopoly versus the perfectly competitive firm first. All right, so the Monopoly is the sole producer. We know that. Whereas the competitive firm is one of many producers. The Monopoly faces a downward sloping demand curve, and that's a key for later on. The Monopoly faces a downward sloping demand curve. The competitive firm faces a horizontal demand curve going straight across. The Monopoly is a price maker. The competitive firm is a price taker. And the monopoly reduces price to increase sales, whereas the competitive firm sells as much or as little at the same price. So to they reduce the price to increase sales, uh, whereas the competitive firm they sell as much as or as little at the same price. So those are some of the key distinctions between the monopoly and the perfectly competitive firm. And so we have them here depicted graphically. Where we have the demand curve for the, the perfectly competitive firm straight across and the, for the, the perfectly competitive firm straight across and the demand curve for the monopoly is downward sloping so we can see that in the graph and then we're looking at total monopolies revenue how do they arrive at their revenue so total revenue as we have seen before is price times quantity and that's total revenue so price of the good times the amount you sold that's the total revenue tr the average revenue, of course, is the unit where you divide the total revenue by the amount sold and you get the average revenue and it also is equal to price. Then you have marginal revenue, which is a change in total revenue over a change in quantity equal marginal revenue. So this is how we find marginal revenue. So a change in total revenue over a change in quantity, that is how we find total marginal revenue and we, we have looked at that before. So you have a graph here depicting all of that. Okay, so quantity of water, price, total revenue, marginal revenue. And as you can see, as I say, price and average revenue, they are basically the same. All right, average revenue is, tot is total revenue divided by quantity. So we have total revenue, which is 10, divided by the quantity, which is 10. So you get 10, same way, 1 divided by, I mean, total revenue divided by the quantity so that's total revenue which is 10 and the quantity so you get the same 10. all right so you can see where they measure up so as you can see here the price as the price is going as the quantity increases from one zero to one to three to four to five to six to seven to eight you would realize that the price is falling and that's a distinction that the monopoly has versus the perfectly competitive firm so in order for the monopoly to sell more they have to reduce their prices as you can see here so you sell one gallon the price is 10 two the price is eight nine three the price is eight four seven five six and you go down the line so you can see as the quantity increases the price that the monopoly charges is going down and then you see total revenue here which is total revenue equal price times q as you can see the total revenue is also as you can see it goes which a point and then start going down so you'd realize that we look at that later when looking at the profit maximizing level for the monopoly all right and of course average revenue is going down as the gallons or the amount you produce goes up all right and marginal revenue likewise start go it goes down 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 and it sometimes reaches negative so all these are things that you can look at as it relates to the monopoly and how they're going to end up reaching their profit maximizing um, position all right so monopoly's revenue a monopoly's marginal revenue a monopoly's marginal revenue is always less than the price of the good the marginal revenue is always less than the price of the good and you can see it here the marginal revenue is always less than the price of the good always the demand curve is downward sloping when a monopoly drops up the receipt from the previously sold unit also decreases so that's this way it's a downward sloping and so that is why they have to drop their price if they want to sell more all right law of supply and i mean supply and demand okay good monopoly is marginal revenue when a monopoly increases the, the amount it sells it has two effects on total revenue which is price times quantity the output effect more output is sold so quantity is higher or the price effect price falls so p is low and we said that before if you output more right if you, if you increase your output two things can happen 
the price effect which is the price will fall as it showed before so as it produces more the price goes down and then you have the output effect where more output is sold so quantity is higher so you produce more the price might fall but you're going to get the money you're going to get more money based on volume so they're selling the output they're selling more so more output is sold even though it's at the output they're selling more so more output is sold even though it's at a lower price and so that's how they end up with you know greater profits in that in that area so again the, the two effects on total revenue is total revenue the output effect where more output is sold so quantity is higher and then the price effect where price falls so the price is lower and so those are the effects that the monopoly has when they increase the amount it sells now we have a diagram depicting that right there and so you have marginal revenue which is the red one and we have the demand curve or average revenue which is the blue one right there and you can see it also goes down to negative as you can see this is the price this is the quantity as price goes down quantity goes up all right so you have to reduce their price in order to sell more so what is the profit maximizing point for the monopoly then what is the profit maximizing point for the monopoly a monopoly maximizes profits by producing the quantity at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we get that that we've seen this happening again. The very same thing for the perfect competitive firm. So the profit maximizing position is where MR equals MC, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. It then uses the demand curve to find the price that will induce customers to buy that quantity. So that's a key difference right there. Even though the market price or the profit maximizing price for the competitive firm is where MR equal MC, that's the price. In case of the monopoly now, yes, they're gonna look at the point where MR equal MC for the maximum profit, but to get that price, they have to look at a demand curve and see which part of the demand curve corresponds to where the MR equal MC, as you're gonna see in this diagram right here. Okay? So Here's the diagram showing you the diagram you have to understand and be able to read because the syllabus asks to, you know, illustrate the diagrams that are linked to the various, the various market structures. And so this is a key diagram as it relates to the monopoly. This is where they maximize their profit. So let's look at it closely. So we have here marginal revenue, MR, and we have here marginal cost, MC. And so marginal cost equals marginal revenue right here at Q max. Now, look at this. At Q1, the firm is not maximizing their profit. Why? Because at Q1, the case if the marginal revenue, sorry, marginal cost is lower than the average total cost. So as you can see here, from Q1, we can see that the marginal cost for the monopoly is lower than the marginal revenue all right so marginal cost is lower than marginal revenue so in that case the monopoly has some room to 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 obtain more profit at the extreme point at q2 we see that marginal revenue is less than marginal cost so marginal cost is way up here marginal revenue is way down here so marginal come up here marginal revenue is less than marginal cost so that's not ideal for the monopoly either so what they have to do is pull back on output back 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 until they reach here so here from q1 they have to increase output but at q2 they have to pull back output until they reach right here where marginal cost equals marginal revenue or where mr equal mc so that's the point of profit maximization but what about the price now now to obtain the price what they have to do as the monopoly is look at the demand curve now and see what point of the demand curve corresponds to where MR equal MC and then that is how they determine the price in the monopoly. All right, so that's what the intersection of the marginal revenue curve and the margin, marginal cost curve determines the profit maximizing quantity and then the demand curve shows the price consistent with that quantity. So that's how you obtain the price at the profit maximizing position for the monopoly. All right. So if you compare the monopoly to the perfect com perfectly competitive firm, we can see that for competitive firm, price equals marginal cost equal marginal revenue. And all of them are the same. So price equal marginal revenue equal marginal cost. So that is it for the 
competitive firm, but for the monopoly now, price is greater than where price is greater than marginal revenue equal marginal cost. So the price is always greater than the intersection of marginal revenue equal marginal cost. In the perfectly competitive firm, price is equal to marginal revenue equal marginal cost, but in the monopoly, price is greater than monopoly, price is greater than marginal revenue equal marginal cost as you can see here from the diagram so this is price up here and it's greater than the intersection so that's how the monopoly maximizes its profit but what is the monopoly's profit as the syllabus asks us to look for now profit equals total revenue minus total cost we know that so profit equal total revenue minus total cost profit can also be written as total revenue divided by quantity minus total cost divided by quantity times quantity and in this case it's this is average revenue minus average cost total average cost times quantity or in another way you can put it property is equal to price because all of this is is is, is, is price right so it is price and so price minus average total cost which is this times q so that's how we can find the monopoly and so we're going to see it in the diagram again so the profit area is all of this all of this b c d e all of this is the profit area for the monopoly all of this profit all right because i realize this is where profit i will go back again we go back let's go back profit equal price minus average total cost times quantity and so it's depicted here in this graph the, monopol the monopolist will receive economic profits as long as price is greater than average total cost. So once price, which is here, is greater than average total cost, which is this blue line right here, then the monopolist is receiving profits. So that's how they get their profit right there. Once price is greater than average total cost. That is where that is how the monopolist profit that is how the monopolist profit looks. So you have, to, you have to know these two diagrams. So they ask the outline, you know, which area has the profit for the monopoly, then you would see that it's the box B, C, D, E, and is always greater than where the price is greater than average total cost. Alright, so that's profit. And of course, at any point where the average total cost curve is above the price then we have problems we know that there would be a loss being made all right so you have to look for that so that's basically it for what CX is asking us for as it relates to the monopoly we can have more in depth if it was university level but we're not so they said graph related to the short run and long run equilibrium showing profit maximizing output price and profit slash loss so we have seen the mark the maximizing output where MR equal MC we have seen the price and we have seen the profit and loss for the monopolist all right so that would be it for the monopolist and as it relates to the graphs that are associated with the the more important graphs that are associated with the monopoly and so the next time i'm going to look at the oligopoly and then eventually the monopolistic competition all right and so we have already looked at the barriers to entry and these kind of things so we are now still at section four, market structure and market failure, specific objective number three. So number three, I decided to break it down into three. I decided to break it down into the different uh, market structures. So monopoly, perfect competition, oligopoly, and per monopolistic competition. And so we're gonna look at them individually. Interpret graphs to the main market structure. So we illustrate the graphs and then we interpret the graph so we have covered three and four for monopoly today all right so stay tuned for more so you know what to do now you like you subscribe please like the video subscribe and share with friends so that you know when learn skn drops another video uh for economics or pob or maybe agriculture science or past paper whatever it might be but to know you have to be notified you have to be subscribed so do that